Hello again. Um, today I want to talk about five comic books in my collection and why they're significant um, for my collection. One of the things I love about comic book collecting is um, is really hearing about people's stories and why certain comic books are important to their collections. Um, so I want to start off with Marvel Team Up uh, number 91. So as a as a really small boy, um, my older brother had a collection of comics, and he was he was an aspiring artist. And one of the very first comic books I ever remember uh, was this this comic book. And when I got into collecting, uh, it took me a while to figure out what this comic book was. Now the first time I held this comic book, uh, I must have been about six or seven years old tops. Um, this must have been. 1981, 82. And so because of this comic book, I actually ended up becoming a big Ghost Rider fan. And um, after some time, my brother eventually gave away his entire collection to my cousin. Um, and I uh, never got to hold a comic book for a long time after that. So um, so the first, first comic book I ever remembered is this one. Um, and so... It's, a, it's an important part of why uh, I love comic books today. The next comic book is Daredevil number 293. Now, this is the first comic book I actually bought uh, all the way back in 1991 uh, from the newsstand. And as I was getting into comics, I, I was um, 11th grade, maybe, 1991, 11th grade. Uh, I guess I'm dating myself. Anyway... Uh, I was at I was at a local drugstore, and um, I spotted this comic off the rack, and I thought it was just badass. The um, the Daredevil standing over um, the Punisher. I didn't know very much about comic books actually at the time, but this is the comic book that I've owned for over thirty years. It's been read quite a few times. It's got a lot of spine ticks, but um, I've had it in my collection the entire time, nonetheless. But it's important to me. The next comic book is Starman number zero. I also bought this comic book right off of the newsstand. Um, this was 1994. And I had returned from my first overseas uh, tour, which was in Korea. And I was stationed in, I was stationed in Fort Stewart. And in, inside the, the convenience stores, as we call them in the Army, the Shopette, the Army Air Force Exchange Service, AFES, the AFES Shopette, this comic book was on the rack. And now, I, I had been reading the Zero Hour Mini. Uh, I'm not the biggest DC fan. Um, and so I've always found DC Comics hard to get into. A lot of people did. And that's part of the reason why DC Comics... Um, did the zero hour event was to try and bring in fresh readers. So um, when I bought this comic book, um, I wasn't, the, the art was very basic by Tony Harris. It eventually got better. Um, but the cliffhanger at the end, um, the cliffhanger at the end, kept, it, it kept me uh, coming back for more for the second issue, so on and so forth. And, um, What's, what's important about this comic book is this is one of the few um, series that I have from beginning to end, including all of the, um, the specials that came along with it, the 80-page uh, giant, the annuals. Um, so Starman really, after a while, became my absolute favorite character. And um, it's one that I, I will go back from time to time. This, this comic has been read multiple multiple times so when they released the omnibus um uh, the series in the omnibus format all six volumes i picked them all up and I, I read this story about once a year i go through the omnibus and reread the entire thing also i, I feel as the covers got to be exceptional as the series went along um, and the art got better and, and what i really love about this this series is that you read it from beginning to end it has a, a start and a finish and it all everything throughout the series ties up uh, very neatly at the end and you get the complete the complete story 
Um, one fun fact uh, about the omni about the omnibuses. One day I was just checking to see, hey, what are these things going for? And they go for quite a good amount of money. So um, those are the print runs got lower as that omnibus series went on. But um, this this is the comic. Um, that really introduced me to Starman as a whole, and Starman became my favorite character. Okay, The Incredible Hulk 106. Now, what's important about this book is after a good while away from comics, after having basically started a family, um, com comics went to the wayside. Now, I bought this comic book at the, at the exchange... On Camp uh, Liberty in Iraq, uh, the Victory Base Complex. This is during the the surge of 2006-2007. So, I was I was in there to get some snacks, and I couldn't believe that they actually had some comics on the shelf. And uh, the the title just grabbed me: World War Hulk. It's got all kinds of spine takes on it. It's a newsstand. Um, doesn't go for much. But um, this is the comic book that brought me back into collecting. Uh, I couldn't believe it. Again, I was in Iraq, and I couldn't believe that this comic w was on the shelf. I, I just couldn't believe they were, they were selling comic books in a war zone. Go figure. So um, as soon as I got back from my deployment, I went on a hunting spree for just about anything World War Hulk, Planet Hulk related. Um, but... <clears throat> um, once again, the importance of this book is that this, after... I don't, about 10 years or so away from collecting brought me back into collecting and, and I pretty much went hard and heavy uh, after this after this read. So that's why this is significant. All right, the last of my five books is my copy of Silver Surfer number four. And this is a cover that I've always loved, always. And I always wanted a, a copy and so this this book is significant because the reason uh, that I have this book, or yes, the reason I have this book is because I started flipping comics. And I started flipping comics to buy this comic. And uh, when, I, when I got back from my first deployment to Afghanistan, I, I told myself that I would get uh, one, of these, one of these copies. And um, so yeah, I flipped a bunch of comics. To, to pay for this. Um, eventually, I, I sold it off. Um, I sold off a bunch of comics, a, a bunch of like duplicates that I'd collected over the years. Um, and even though I had a break in, in uh, collecting, I still maintained my collection. And in that collection, I had multiples of, of First Carnage, um, uh, First Cletus Cassidy, a lot of the Spider-Man stuff. Um, my multiples of, of first appearance of Deadpool, uh, I, I sold them off. So um, uh, that would be a bargain in today's prices for what I sold them. But no, no worries. I still made a pretty good profit. Now, um, I, I ended up sending this in to get encapsulated through CBCS when they had, as you can see, the very ugly labels. Uh, and this, for some reason, came back restored. I won't get into too much about, about this comic itself, except that... Um, this is the reason why uh, I started speculating, um, actually more or less flipping. I'm not really a speculator, I'm a flipper. So why I started flipping to improve my collection and the reason I have a, a decent graded collection now is all really thanks to this comic book. I would never have started flipping comics had I not, um, had I not started flipping for this comic book. I, I, would never would, I would never have the collection I have now. So... That's um, five comic books that I have in my collection and that have some sort of significance or reason behind it. But anyway, that's all I got. Later.